right there. It's a crappie. They have not been biting. I've been fishing for several hours. Every method. Minnows, worms, swim baits, and now crank baits. Finally got one. It's a little white. Not a nine inch or or black, I mean nine inch black. They have just been dead slow. Alright, got folks, I got fish number two and it's a really nice spotted bass, really nice. On the same lure, the crankbait. I couldn't catch any on minnows at the hole I was at, so I threw a what I do is every hole I get to, I throw the crankbait first. Boy, he's a good one. He's, I bet he's two pounds. That's a nice spotted bass right there. Look at that. Man, he's two pounds. He's about 15 inches. At least 14, but I'm saying 15. Not bad for three foot of water. This hole right here, folks, is only three foot deep. And I was about to just go on up and go to the next one. But uh, as you can see, that's not always important. Fish will be in shallower water at times. That is a nice spotted bass right there for a river. For a small creek, I should say. This is just a creek, not a river. Wow. I'm going to wash him off and get a good view of it here. Good two pounder. Boy. That's what I'm talking about. Not bad. There's something about this lure folks here. I'm going to explain why this is a very good lure. All it is is a simple bomber model A. It's half black and half white. The reason you can use this lure in any water is because of the contrasting colors. Because of it being the darkest color possible and the lightest color possible. Minus chartreuse would be brighter obviously but my point is that you can fish this in crystal clear water or muddy water and it doesn't matter they will see it. If it's real dingy, they're going to see the black in that red spot more than they will the white. But uh, when you're fishing clear water, they're going to see the white before they see the black. So you cannot go wrong with it. It is one of the very few lures you can use in any, any type of water situation. And that's why I always do so good on it. Because, for instance, right now... This water, when I walked up to it, I can't even sit there and tell you if it's clear or muddy because it's kind of neither. It's, it's got about three feet of visibility at the most, maybe two. So it's kind of hard to choose lure color in that situation. It's really hard to say, hey, is this clear or is this muddy? I would have to describe it as stained, if anything, I guess. So when I get to a situation like that, I normally use this lure over other ones oh got another one small one though hey they're biting good for a poor day it's supposed to be poor day we do have improving weather after uh, pretty much four days of rain straight now we've had this is we're on our third day without rain and it's been bluebird skies and perfectly in the uh lower 80s so they're picking back up that water is getting back to normal levels Real small guy, 10 incher. And uh, so the water is improving, or the fishing is improving, I should say.
Another one. It's decent, whatever it is. Oh, it's a gar. God, spotted gar. Felt decent. <laughs> He's a small guy. He's only about 14 inches. Well, I'm going to have to have the pliers, ain't I? Yep. Time to get the old pliers out. Oh, boy. Well, it felt really good at first. For like five seconds, it felt like a real decent fish. So I thought, anyway. Boy, you're going to ruin my hook, buddy. That's why I do not like getting a gar. They will destroy your crankbait in a hurry. Them and pickerel. Or the, that's actually, pickerel is number one for destroying your lures because they inhale the thing where you almost can't get it out. Not bad, three fish from this one hole. And I haven't caught a single fish on minnows yet. Oh, yeah. Nice. Wow, what is this? Oh my God, it's a big, real large mouth. Whoa, four pounder, large mouth. Oh my God, it's a real large mouth too, Wilma. It's not a spotted bass, it's a big one. This is worth keeping, it's that big. Oh my gosh, that's a nice bass. Wow, he's at least three and a half. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. My goodness. Nice large mouth, guys. Real nice. He ain't done yet. Boy, that's a nice one. Definitely a big for a creek. Oh, yeah. My gosh, what a hoss for, for a little creek bass. My goodness. Wow. I bet he's 18 inches. It's not a spot either, it's a bucket mouth. A real bucket mouth. Wowzers. I'm gonna, just cause I'm curious, I'll probably go ahead and measure it and weigh it. On the bomber crankbait. Wow. All right, just cause I'm curious. We are going to see. He is, I'm going to say he's 18 at a minimum, 17, but I'm thinking 18. He's 18, exactly. A little over 18 and a half. And I'm going to say three and a half pounds. He should have just walked in the water. Easier, way easier. I got over here in 10 seconds. You should have been already over here. Not hard. You should not have went through the weeds like that. All right, and we are zeroed. Yep, all right. Let's just see what he weighs, I'm just curious. Let's say three and a half to four. He is three eight, three pounds, eight ounces. Not bad. It's decent for a small creek like this. And actually largemouth bass are kind of rare in here. Only about one out of 10 are a true largemouth. So I'm blessed just to get a largemouth out of here. Three and a half. Nice. Yeah. It, he definitely scared all the fish. Oh, that's why I got some more in here. <laughs> but you already go over there. Folks, that's a decent largemouth right there for a river. Out of a pond, it ain't nothing, but it it's hard to catch one over five pounds out of a stream, especially this size. 
You want to keep it or put it back? We're going to put it back so I can enjoy it again because I do come here a lot. Not bad. Nice large mouth. What a beaut. Pretty decent. The bomber. No, the correct bomber Model A again. The the current's too swift in this hole. We, the minnows won't be good until we get up to that next one. The three holes after that. Man. Not bad at all. Yeah, that's a nice large mouth. Look. Here. Look, sir. You're far. That way I'll be able to take a picture from the camera to put on Facebook. Put it down a little bit because your face is covered. It's already on. It's recording. You don't have to touch anything. Mm -hmm. okay. Alright folks, we're going to get her back in the water. He's been out of the water about two or three minutes. So. Okay. That's a tip of the day probably right there. Put slow. Oh. It'll be all right. No, it's hard to use a minnow here because it's too swift. Yeah. It will get we'll get a good chance the next the three what holes. Did you up. Use? Oh my eyes! <sighs> yeah. Black and white. You got a black and white one, that speckled one, right there. That one white with black splotches on it. Yeah. Uh huh. All the way down here, you can't see it because the water's up two feet. Now where we can use the minnow is in front of that tree that sticks way out of the water up there is where we're going to catch most of the fish. This is not even the good part of the hole, it's up there. That's where he fell off the tree. See where that big, there's a real big tree out there and he caught the bow fin and I caught three crappie. Alright folks, I caught another bass before I even had my camera on at this hole. This one's a spotted bass, so oh, 11, 10, 11 inches. Definitely nothing compared to the one I just had. But <clears throat> oh, oh, I just missed one. It went completely under and I wasn't paying attention like an idiot. Got it. Oh my God, it's a bowfin. Oh God, it's big, really big. Oh my goodness. It's either that or a gar. It's a gar and it's big though, really big. Oh my goodness. It's as big as that one I caught before down here. Well, so much for not scaring the crappie away. God, he's going to scare all of them. Folks, this is a monster gar, though. Probably lower 30s, mid 30s. He's about mid 30s. Not a small gar. I'm going to try to walk him over your way so he can... God, that would probably ruin my chance at crappie now. <sighs> my goodness, that's a big gar though. For a spotted. That's a spotted gar, I think. Might be a long nose. That's a long nose. Look at his. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, he knows and he sees this. Yeah, that's a long nose gar. Ooh, that hook's barely in him. Folks, that is a, I'm not gonna pick him up this time, but that is a pretty big gar. I ain't gonna measure it, but I'm gonna say he's 36, 37 inches. Wow. My goodness, barely hooked. 
We mean barely. Oh yeah, he was about to get off any second. Wow. Hurry up, hurry up. Let's do this quick. I don't like holding these things. Not bad, folks. We're gonna get her back in before she cuts my hands up. Okay. Oh. Gosh. A minnow and bobber. Right where the crappie were though, that's what is a shame because now I probably don't have a s s chance at a crappie. I guarantee that fish just done scared everything away from there. Oh well. All right folks, I got my first crappie evening. He's real girthy. It's only about a 10 incher, but it's real thick for some reason. He's a real girthy fish. I always check these to make sure they ain't black noses because I caught the one in here. Nice little black crappie. First one of the day. So we finally got a mixed bag. Drum, largemouth, spotted bass, gar, and now crappie. That thing is real thick. They're starting to put on weight for the winter. They're going to start feeding real good in the next couple weeks. Alright folks, I guess we'll put these back. We ain't catching enough to be worth keeping them. Alright, we're going to put her back. See if we can get some more. It's about time. I used to nail them right there. I don't know what the deal is. Oh, I got one. There we go. Wilma, I think it's a white bass. It's big. Oh God, what is this? It's another large mouth. No, it's a spotted bass, but it's big. It's that current so strong through here. He felt like it was, it felt like a three or four pound white bass. <laughs> My goodness. There we go. After quite a while without any fish at all, she caught two crappie, but I was away from her, so I didn't get them on camera. I finally got my first spotted bass in a long time. Actually, this is my first fish in almost an hour. I hadn't had any good luck. Had a few hits and misses, but uh, mostly misses. He's not too bad. about pound and a half he's 13 inches not bad I thought I had me a white bass because of the way it was fighting and because I caught two of them here last week in that exact same spot but it wasn't the current so strong through here that every fish feels way bigger than what they really are what is happening Oh, right, a bowfin, right at the end. Oh, that's a big one, too. Could be a channel, I guess. It is a channel. Not bad at all. Looks like this is my last fish. Hey, he's decent. Oh, yeah. Not bad. I thought it was a bowfin. Not bad at all. He's a... Keeper size channel cat. He's probably he's a good sturdy two pounds. Yeah, two pounder. All right, that ends my day, folks. Another mixed bag today: largemouth, spotted bass, drum, gar, crap.
crappie and catfish. <clears throat> Cause I can't really see good anymore, so it's time to get going. I'll show her this catfish and then we're gonna head back to the car. I am completely covered in mud. I'm slipping and falling several times. And uh, we're just tired, we wanna get home. You know, all in all, it was, it was supposed to be a poor day according to the almanac, but uh, it turned out to be, I wanna say fair. You know, we caught two or three of each kind, so. It wasn't terrible. This time of the year, you have to ignore that because the weather is, at least here in Southeast Missouri, it's starting to get cold at night and uh, that water's cooling off, so they're putting on the pounds for winter. And they're actively feeding pretty pretty much all, you can fish all day. Uh, you know, like the, the high temperatures, I think, in the lower 80s, so that makes it more comfortable for fishing all day really easily. Look! Honey! Honey! <laughs> <laughs>